So, in this lecture, we are going to discuss relationship between fabric properties and fiber, fabric and finishing parameters. We will see how fabric properties are influenced by maybe fiber properties, fiber parameters, similarly fabric constructional parameters, the finishing treatments. Now, designer should have a qualitative understanding about the mechanisms or the theory related to these relationship. Next is there has to be an awareness about various technological options related to material process, assembly structure and finishing techniques. So, this awareness is very, very important for the designer. The option to be exercised in many situation that there may be few options to a designer in terms of selection of material or choosing a particular process or a structure of the assembly which could be fabric structure, it could be the garment assembling techniques or the finishing processes. Then the option that he has to exercise will be based on cost, an important consideration, ease of implementation is another important techniques and the other one is availability of the technology. So, based on this cost, easiness from the point of view of implementation and the availability of the technology or the material, one has to exercise the right option. So, first let us see ki what is the relationship between fiber and end use properties of a fabric. The relationship between fiber and finished product properties is extremely complex, because the fiber is converted into yarn, yarn is converted into a fabric and then the fabric may undergo certain processes, which could be chemical in nature, which could be mechanical in nature and then the properties of the fabric or the fabric may be converted into a some kind of other structures, which is the product structure. So, therefore, the relationship between fiber and the finished product properties is extremely complex in nature, because there are so many variation which is possible, there are so many factors which are there. All st stages of production chain can be treated as a series of input output relation that influence product properties. So, you see basically the entire process that we have starting from raw material to the finished product, there is enormous number of processes which are there and the fiber which is the starting building block you can say. It passes through so many operations and therefore, there could be so many changes of its own properties and when it is assembled, the properties of the assembled product may also differ. Now, factors affecting properties of the end product are first of all the raw material, whether it is cotton, whether it is polyester, whether it is nylon. So, raw material then it will also depend on the type of yarn, what type of yarn I am using. You have already been told about the various types of yarns which are available commercially in the market and what are their features and what are their properties. Then it comes type of fabric, there are so many different ways fabrics can be produced, so many different manufacturing techniques are there. So, it also depends upon the type of fabric 
then finishing and after treatments then comes makeup that is when we convert the fabric into a particular product. So, you see so many factors are there which will affect the property. Now, if we discuss about raw material let us say, then I can have man made raw material, we can have natural fibers also. If it is man made, then what matters is the what is the polymer, what is the additives, is it a fiber mixtures, constructional shape of the fiber, what is the properties of the filament in terms of fineness, smoothness, whether it has been chemically treated or not the strength, elongation, initial modulus, so many parameters are there for the man made fiber. Similarly, this is also true for natural fibers. Type of yarn, the question may come is it monofilament yarn or multifilament yarn, is it twisted yarn or plied yarn, is it a textured yarn or not. If it is staple yarn, it is a blended yarn or not, what is the technology that has been used to spin the yarn, is it a ring yarn, rotary yarn, vortex yarn, compact yarn, how much twist has been used and what is, is it single line, single yarn or is it a plied yarn. So, within yarn we can see so many varieties are there, even if the raw material is same, the yarn spun from ring spinning technology or using rotor spinning technology or vortex spinning technology, there will be some differences in their properties, they will not be exactly same. So, type of yarn therefore, can also affect the properties, type of fabric if we look at it, whether it is open or knitted, non open, spacer, composite, the construction part of it, ends and peak density, weave if it is knitted, what is the knitted pattern? So, many factors are there in the fabric. Finishing, is it stentering, type of dyeing, dye stuff used, chemicals, mechanical or thermal post treatment that has been given, resin finishing or alkalizations or roughing or singeing. See, as I we have discussed earlier, the finishing process also there are so much of varieties are there and all these finishing processes will definitely change the character of the fabric. Therefore, the properties if we want to let us say associate the property of the fiber, the property of the fabric it is a very, very complex. The makeup is another thing form and assembly of the individual components into the product. So, what is the form and how the pieces of the fabrics are joined together or assembled together that will also will have an effect whether I have joining them uh, together using one single fabric or have I gone for a compound fabrics and then joining them together, what kind of sewing techniques I am using to join the fibers together or am I using some other techniques to join fabrics and what kind of shape finally, I am giving to the product. So, makeup within makeup there is also so much variations would be there. Therefore, we see that the prediction of the performance of the product from the basic properties of the fiber is not an easy task. So, if we look at the cause and effect model which could be there, then we can describe it with the help of this particular diagram. If you look at this diagram, what we see here? there are series of boxes and each of these boxes is representing the first one is polymer type, the next one is fiber or filament, 
next one is yarn, then fabric, then equipment for finishing. And what is basically shows, then finally coming to fabric property, then makeup and then finished goods. And you see they are connected together by some arrows and we have two different color arrows. One is blue arrow or blue lines indicating indirect effect and the other which is orange in color representing the direct effect. So, the fabric property which is here, it will have a direct property of the fabric will be affected by the type of polymer which has been used, then the filament or the fiber that is what is the fineness of the fiber, what is the strength of the fiber, what is the uh, modulus, elongation, cross-sectional shape, all of them will have a direct effect on fabric property. Same is the case for the yarn also, how much twist has been used to make the yarn, what is the uh, fineness of the yarn, is it a single yarn, ply yarn, fabric and finishing techniques, all of them will have a direct influence on the fabric property. The other thing is that that could be di indirect influence because polymer type will influence the fiber and filament property. Similarly, some filament property will affect the yarn property, fineness of the filament, then let us say the cross sectional shape of the filaments, then the modulus of the filament, all of them will have a bearing on the properties of the yarn. So, this particular picture gives you an idea that there are so many causes which can affect the property of the fabric and the fabric property is translated into finished good properties through this make, make up process because fabric property we change the fabric, give a shape that we design something that is the makeup and after makeup we get the final finished goods. So, the property of the fabric is translated through this makeup to the property of the finished goods. So, therefore, the property of the finished goods is related to properties of the polymer, fiber, yarn, fabrics, the processing parameters, so many things are there. What we can say that original fiber properties gets changed to greater or lesser extent during each process stage. So, the fiber property will get changed as it pass through the different processes because there are lot of stresses, lot of strains which will be acting, they may be subjected to chemical treatments. So, the starting fiber, whatever properties was there, by the time it has been converted into a fabric and it has been dyed or it has been finished, the basic property of that polymer has changed or the property of the fiber has changed because it has undergone so many processes where there are a lot of heat sometimes, lot of physical stresses and strains of different types or it was subjected to some chemical treatment. And hence that is what it says that original fiber properties gets changed. The other thing is the physical and chemical properties can be modified by crimping, twisting, weave type, finishing to such an extent that the latter predominantly determines the property of the final product. It basically means that there could be a significant change in the property through these actions called crimping or twisting. We have seen earlier that the twist is a parameter of the yarn which can change the character of the yarn very, very significantly. It can make the yarn soft, it can make the yarn hard, everything is possible by manipulating twist. 
So, the type of wave and the kind of you know, ends and peak density we are keeping during weaving. If it is a uh, woven fabric, if it is knitted fabric, again the type of knitted loops that we are forming, they will all have influence and they may sometimes play a much more dominant role than the other properties. Next is relationship between product properties, fiber, fabric and finishing parameters. We continue, this is an interesting diagram which will be very helpful for, for any designer for that matter. This is a kind of, in a way this is a kind of Venn diagram. If some of you must be knowing or studied the Venn diagram, it is similar to this. Now, what is there in it? If we look at the, uh, the text that is written here, is these are all basically the properties of the final product. Resistance to light and heat, moisture absorption, swelling behavior, dye fastness, whiteness or elasticity, stretchability, tensile strength, absorption resistance, these are all basically is, is a list of properties of the product or let us say fabric that is stated here and they have been grouped in such a way that the one which is within the blue rectangle, these properties are influenced by fiber properties. So, what are there within the blue rectangle? Resistance to light and heat, then moisture absorption, swelling behavior, dye fastness, whiteness, dye fading, anti-static, burning resistance or tensile abrasion, dimensional stability, moisture, peeling, all these properties which are there within this blue rectangle can all be influenced by the basic property of the fiber. Then whatever is there within the green rectangle, they are all influenced by the finishing process and whatever is there within this red rectangle are all influenced by the construction parameters of the fabric it could be ends and picks per inch or it could be in the case of knitted material, it could be what is wells and courses per inch. So, whatever the constructional parameters are there, they can influence the properties which are there within the red rectangle. Let us take an example, let us say air permeability. Air permeability can be influenced by construction parameters that means what is the ends and peaks per inch if it is a woven fabric. So, if we have ends and peaks per inch more then the interlacements will be very close to each other and therefore, the inter yarn spaces is going to be smaller and smaller and hence air permeability is going to be less and less the more closer the yarns are, the less is going to be the air permeability. So, that is how it will be affected. At the same time, air permeability can also be affected by with other parameters. Now, this is you see it is not within the blue line or blue no, rectangle, but it is within the green rectangle. That means, there is a finishing techniques also can have some influence on air permeability or weightability or smoothness. The finishing process also can change because we can suppose we go for a mechanical finishing techniques and raise the fibers from the surface of the fabric and therefore, we make the surface of the fabric full of projected hairs. So, that will change the permeability behavior of the fabric totally. So, air permeability can be changed by finishing technique 
my construction tech construction parameters also. And there are some properties which are bounded by both red, blue and green rectangles which are there these are these. So, these properties can be changed by either manipulating fibers or by finishing techniques or by construction parameters. So, such kind of you know, diagram will be very handy to the designer in order to know that which particular properties can be influenced by either fiber property or by construction parameters or by finishing techniques. So, when a designer wants to design something where he has to enhance performance in a certain respect and therefore, he has to be he has to apply or he has to focus on certain property of the fabric, then he can identify ki how that particular property can be manipulated either by fibers or finishing techniques or by constructional parameters. From there we go to the next what is written here the certain product properties like moisture relation, anti static, flame retardancy can be influenced by fiber properties or by finishing. As an example, here it is given that moisture absorption or anti static properties they can be influenced by both because anti static properties depends upon what type of fiber I am going to use. We all know that polyesters or acrylic these fibers are static prone, whereas if we use viscose rayon or cotton or linen they are not static prone. So, by choosing the right type of fiber or maybe we can make a blend of these two some fibers and we can reduce the static propensity of a product or if we cannot really change the fiber then we have a means that is finishing techniques. We can apply anti static finish and thereby reduce the static charge generation. So, that is how we will say that some of these as a result of this like anti static can be influenced by both the finishing techniques or fiber properties. From there we go to the next slide now. Now, this is a design process flow just to give you an idea. What we see here from the left hand side and we move towards the right hand side. Generally, when a designer starts the process of designing, he has to st start from the finished product because this finished product property attributes will be given to him that this is the performance of the product that is what is desirable. That means, requirements in terms of properties of the product first should be known to him. Once he knows that these are the requirement for the product, then we will start back calculating. From the product, he is go to the fabric. Therefore, once the design for the end product, if the product type and the desired performance characteristics once are known, then this becomes a function of fabric, because the performance of a product is dependent on the fabric that he is going to choose. This is basically a very simplistic you know, diagram. So, end product property is a function of fabric property and then the fabric property in turn is dependent on fabric constructional parameters and fabric properties these two. So, fabric means it has 
So, there has to be some constructional part of the fabric and then the fabric properties are there. So, the fabric property becomes a function of yarn now, where the yarn has two aspects, one is type of yarn and the parameters and the desired yarn property that lead to fabric properties. That is one he has to work it out. He has to basically find out what is the fabric properties. If I know the end product property, I have to know what is the fiber constructional parameter I should have and what is the fabric properties that I should aim for. That is will be his job, the designer's job. After knowing that this is the fabric construction parameter that I should have and fabric properties, now he should go to the yarn because to get that fabric properties, what type of yarn he has to use, what is the, the parameters that he has to know. Okay. So, then that means, he has to find out what is the type of yarn he should use and what are the design yarn properties should be. So, that the fabric properties that the design is aiming that can be achieved. Once these two are determined, the type of yarn that will be required and the parameters of the yarn basically means what should be fineness of the yarn and whether I should go for a filament yarn or a span yarn or should I go for blended yarn and then what technology I should use, should I go for a ring span yarn or a carded yarn or a combed yarn like that, that is the yarn type and what should be the properties of that yarn, so that it fulfills the fabric properties that is desired. So, yarn in terms is dependent on fiber, so in the fiber the designer has to choose the fiber type and desired properties this would be desired fiber properties they'll lead to yarn property so he has to find out what is the desired fiber property that he should have so that the fabric so, the yarn property that he needs that can be fulfilled. So, that is how the process design process goes on that you start from the beginning that is the product type and what properties are expected in it and then in work out that from the product to fabric, fabric to yarn, yarn to fiber. And once we go from left hand side to right hand side, our entire design process is to some extent is over, because we know ki what are the various technical parameters that we need in the fiber, in the yarn, in the fabric, that is what will be known to us. Now, let us say, now we will take an example and see that if improvement in durability is required in a fabric or in a product, then what are the various uh, relevant factors that we need to identify first. So, this is an example that suppose there is a product in which durability is an issue and we want to or the designer wants to improve the durability aspect. So, a hierarchical representation of the relevant factors are now stated. Product durability basically means structural integrity, tear strain, flexibility, shrinkage on washing or color fastness. Durability is a very general term. Durability is a function of structural integrity, is a function of tear strength function of flexibility, shrinkage, color fastness 
or it could be sometimes abrasion resistance also because depends the wire I am going to use that product. If the abrasion resistance becomes important, we feel for a product, we can also add abrasion resistance here. It all depends. Well, let us say in this case, the product durability is a function of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different basic properties of the fabric which affects my durability of the product. If the color is not good or the color fades too quickly, sometimes you reject the product. So, if sometimes the product may be otherwise good, that just because the color has faded, we, the customer may reject it or he may not like to use it again. So, in a way he rejects the fabric, though mechanically the fabric may be still strong enough and it can be used, but still it is not used because the color has faded. All right. From there, now we need to know what are the various parameters on which structural integrity will depend or tear strength or flexibility or shrinkage or color fastness. So, we go to the stage of fabric now and see what fabric properties are relevant here from the durability point of view. Okay. So, in the next line the fabric is there and the relevant fiber fabric parameters or properties are listed. We have only chosen those parameters or properties which will affect the structural integrity or stear strength or flexibility or shrinkage or color fastness. And the arrows indicate that this particular parameter or property is going to affect it. Let us look at an example. density and thickness of the fabric. How dense is the fabric or how, what is the thickness of the fabric? It is going to affect structural integrity of the fabric. This is one arrow here, the another arrow goes up to flexibility. So, how flexible the, the fabric will be that depends upon the, how tightly the fabric has been constructed and what is the overall thickness of the fabric. So, it will affect flexibility also. So, it affects structural integrity, flexibility, another arrow goes up to shrinkage on washing. So, shrinkage on washing is also dependent upon the density and thickness of the fabric. So, these are the three different you know, durability related parameters or properties which are affected by fabric density. Similarly, Color fastness depends upon also from the fabric point of view the abrasion resistance of the fabric. The fabric abrasion resistance is poor, then color will fade very fast. It also depends on the quality of the dye that has been used. So, you leave that the dye quality, then from the fabric point of view, if the fabric's abrasion resistance, which will also matter. Sometimes the color fades because the fibers moves away from the surface of the yarns with time. <coughs> now, if we go to the next stage, fabric in term, all fabric properties in turn depends on the yarn property. So, we go to the next stage that is the yarn, and the yarn, the relevant parameters are listed here, count twist, strength, abrasions and work of rupture. So, one arrow is missing here, twist let us say the yarn twist will affect tensile strength of the fabric, definitely it will affect. Count will affect density and thickness, count of the yarn will also affect the shrinkage. Therefore, from count we see two arrows. So, like that we can draw arrows and see the connection between the relevant yarn parameters or yarn properties with the fabric properties which are relevant to the overall product durability. Then if we 
go to the next slide, from the yarn we come to the fiber. So, we are going down product to fabric, fabric to yarn, yarn to fiber. Then here is listed a set of relevant fiber properties which will affect the yarn property that is listed in the previous row. So, count of the yarn depends upon the fineness of the fiber, the twist depends upon the fineness, the strength and elongation will also depend upon the tensile modulus of the fiber, it will also affect the work of rupture of the yarn. So, you see like that this kind of association between fiber, yarn, fabric parameters we can establish so that we know that which fiber, yarn and fabric parameters are going to affect the product durability. This is what we should try to, we can make it and this becomes very handy for us, so that uh, the designing process becomes much more systematic in nature. So, these are basically kind of diagrammatic representations of the relationship, but we can also have quantitative relationship between these properties and we will find if you go through the literature or some textbooks, there are a lot of equations which are there and the equations are basically a quantitative relationship between fiber and yarn or yarn and fabric. There are plenty of research that people have done and a lot of research results are available. From there or from the many textbooks, we can find out that there are many quantitative relationships which are existing and they can be skillfully used while trying to design a fabric, while trying to estimate the various design parameters. So, those who have done some courses on textile structures they must be familiar with some of these formula like on one side I have written yarn property and on the right hand side the corresponding formula relationship between yarn and fiber is given like yarn modulus is dependent on fiber modulus multiplied by cos square alpha where alpha is the twist angle. So, a list of you now a, a formula are written here and this is these formula should be available to the designer and he is or she is supposed to make use of this relationship when he or she is trying to estimate the design parameters. So, this is basically a list between where yarn and fiber properties are related to each other. Then one should also know that yarn structural features can get masked and modified or magnified by finishing treatments, we have already stated that. So, this is not new, brushed fabric, enzyme treated fabric, clear finished fabric, lot of no, by all these we can change the character of the yarn parameter structural features. So, whatever the properties that we get that is the direct relationship between fiber and yarn, but some of these finishing techniques can com completely change the surface property of the yarn and thereby property of the fabric. The other relationship, quantitative relationship between fabric properties we should know that fabric properties can change with weave, fiber type, fabric set, yarn type and finishing methods. We have already discussed a bit about them and here some different types of formulae are stated here. Some of you may be already familiar with this, but these are all available at one place and whenever we need to use them, we should make use of these formula which are there in the textbooks, so that 
we can as I said earlier we can basically estimate the various design related parameters. When we discuss about certain examples we will take it up in uh, and then we will show how to make use of this formula. So, here how fabric thickness crimp then fabric GSM or fabric weight that is aerial density. So, fractional cover of yarn is stated here, fractional cover of fabric is stated here, fabric cover factor is stated here, fabric specific density is also stated here. Then tensile strength of the fabric this is a simplest formula has been given where 0.96 this is a factor and this is called strength translation efficiency from yarn to fabric strength. So, this set of formula that many I have you know, collected and stated here similarities for web knitted fabrics quite a few formula are given here also and we can also see some typical constants like knitting constants for dry, dry relaxed, wet relaxed, fully relaxed knitted fabrics and then typical tightness factors of some fabrics, knitted fabrics are also stated here. So, these are all typical values. So, the idea is that whatever formulas are there like here also there are formula related to non even fabrics, fabric density, bulk, volume fraction of fiber, porosity, then it is uh, also pore size, largest pore size, average pore size, the number of fibers per meter squares of the medium, then uh, number of pores per meter square. So, all these have been lot of formulas are there.